In this video, I'll introduce how waves can interfere with one another. Here we have a wave at a constant frequency coming from a speaker connected to a signal generator. When a second speaker connected to the same signal generator, therefore providing the same coherent wave in phase with the original, is switched on, note the pattern that is formed. If you walked across in front of those two speakers, you would get patches of loud and patches of quiet. Interference can be explained using the principle of superposition of waves. Here we have two waves. You'll note that they are perfectly in phase with each other and that they have the same amplitude. Two identical waves in phase with each other. The principle of superposition means that we algebraically add up the displacements in any point. At time zero here, both waves have a displacement of zero, so the resultant wave would also have a displacement of zero. And then at this peak here, both waves are at the peak at the same time, both waves hit zero again at the same time, and both waves have their trough at the same time. Therefore, by adding the two waves together, the resultant wave looks something like this. A wave with the same frequency and double the amplitude. This is constructive interference. The two waves have interfered in order to form a wave with a greater amplitude. Here we have two waves. Again, they have the same frequency, but this time they are out of phase with each other by one half wavelength, 180 degrees. So when this wave has a peak, this wave has a trough, and vice versa, when this one has a trough, this one has a peak. They both cross zero at the same point. So again, we can use superposition to work out what the resultant wave will look like. At time zero, both waves are at zero, so the resultant wave will be zero. At this peak here, this wave has a magnitude of, let's say, one. This wave will have a magnitude of minus one, so the two will cancel out, so it'll be zero. We can move a little bit further along and just take a point here. This wave has a displacement of approximately 0 0.5. This wave would have a displacement of approximately minus 0 0.5, so again, they would cancel out to zero. They both cross zero at the same time there, so that's zero at zero is zero, and so on. As we go along, this one is at minus one, this one is at plus one, is zero. So the resultant of these two waves is this, zero amplitude all the way along. These two waves have destructively interfered. So for constructive interference to occur, two waves must be in phase with each other, a phase difference of zero. And you can see that here, these two waves, there is no difference between the two points. For destructive interference to occur, they must be in antiphase with each other, which is another way of saying out of phase by 180 degrees. So you can see this wave here reaches a peak at that point, whereas this wave here reaches a peak at this point, and that is one half wavelength, or 180 degrees. Note that for interference to work properly, we have to have two coherent waves, that is, waves that have a constant phase difference. For two waves to be coherent, therefore they must have the same frequency that doesn't change. You can see that both sets of waves here are coherent. In this example, they are in phase and remain in phase the whole time because they have the same frequency and are therefore coherent. And in this example, the two waves are 180 degrees out of phase with each other. They are in antiphase. But they are coherent because that phase difference is constant all the way through. If the two waves had different frequencies, you would see that they would go in the phase and out of phase. For example, this wave here has a smaller frequency and a varying frequency. You can see that at certain points it ends up in phase, for example, at this point here. While at other points, such as roughly here, it is out of phase again. So those two, so these two waves would not count as being coherent, and therefore we wouldn't get an interference pattern. One other important definition when dealing with interference is path difference. Now this shouldn't be confused with phase difference. Path difference is the difference in the length of journey travelled by two waves. Here we have two stones that have been dropped into a pond. 
For the one on the left, we've highlighted the wavefronts with green lines, and the one on the right with pink lines. At this point here, the green waves have travelled a total distance of two wavelengths, and also the pink waves have travelled a total distance of two wavelengths. Therefore, the path difference is zero. At this point here, the green wave has travelled again two full wavelengths, but the pink wave has only travelled one and a half wavelengths. Therefore, there is a path difference here of 0 0.5 wavelengths. Let's pick another point up here. The green wave has travelled one, two, three, four wavelengths. The pink has travelled one, two, three, four, five wavelengths. Therefore, we have a path difference of one wavelength. And at this point here, the green wave has travelled one, two, three, four wavelengths, while the pink wave has travelled one, two, three, and a half. So again, we have a path difference of 0 0.5 lambda. Finally, this point here, the green wave has travelled one, two, three and a half waves, while the pink wave has travelled one, two, three, four, five and a half. So we have a path difference of two wavelengths. Now let's look at the surface of the water at each of these points. So at the points where we have whole numbers for our path difference, here, here, and here, we either have a very bright point, which represents a peak of water, or we have a very dark point, which would represent a trough of the water. In these cases, the waves have interfered constructively to make the water deeper or shallower at that particular point. At these points here, where the waves have a path difference of half a wavelength, you'll see that the surface of the water is, is grey and flat. At these points, the two waves have cancelled each other out. They have interfered destructively to result in a constant flat section of water at these places. We can come up with a rule for that then, that when the path difference between two waves is a whole number of wavelengths, for example, zero, one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths, and so on, you will get constructive interference. When the two waves have a path difference that is n plus a half wavelengths, for example, half a wavelength, 1.5 wavelengths or 2.5 wavelengths, then we will get destructive interference.